Hi, my name is Talia Nasi, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. This video is about Amazon DynamoDB and AWS Lambda security. When you use AWS Lambda, there are two permissions that need to be implemented, the function policy and the execution role. A function policy grants permission to access your function. You can use AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, to manage access to the function. You manage permissions in a permissions policy that you can apply to IAM users, groups, or roles. To grant permissions to other accounts or AWS services that use your Lambda resources, you use a policy that applies to the resource itself. Let's say, for example, that you want to upload to an S3 bucket to invoke your Lambda function. How do we know that that function is allowed to be invoked by that S3 upload event? For that, you need a function policy. Lambda will then trust S3 to invoke this function when the upload occurs. The function policy allows the event source of the Lambda function to have the proper permissions it needs to invoke the Lambda function. Everything in the function policy happens before the function starts. Execution roles, however, define what your function can access once it's invoked. By default, you get access to Amazon CloudWatch logs for log streaming. Lambda uses the execution role to know what other resources it's allowed to access. For example, if your Lambda function needs to write something to a DynamoDB table, you need to grant permission to DynamoDB to talk to your Lambda function. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an AWS IAM policy that will be attached to an IAM role. The role is then used to grant a Lambda function access to a DynamoDB table. By using an IAM policy and role to control access, I can tightly control which services the Lambda function can access. The policy also includes permissions to allow the Lambda function to write log files to Amazon CloudWatch logs. This allows me to view utilization statistics for my Lambda functions and to have access to additional logging for troubleshooting issues. In this example, I use a Lambda function, labeled number one, to make read API calls such as get and scan, and write API calls such as put or update to a DynamoDB table, number two. The Lambda function also writes log files to CloudWatch logs, shown by number three. The Lambda function uses an IAM role, number four, that has an IAM policy attached that grants access to DynamoDB and CloudWatch, number five. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, use this QR code for all the data you need to enter into the console. The first step to grant Lambda access to DynamoDB is to create an IAM access policy with JSON. You can do this in IAM with the AWS console or in SAM, the serverless application model. I will attach this policy to a role, and this role will then be attached to a Lambda function, which will assume the required access to DynamoDB and CloudWatch logs. Next, you attach the IAM policy to a role. Navigate to the IAM console and choose Roles in the navigation pane. Choose Create Role, and for the entity, choose an AWS service called Lambda. On the Attach Permissions Policies page, enter the name of the policy that you created. You've just attached the policy you created earlier to a new IAM role, which can now be used by a Lambda function. To apply the IAM role to a Lambda function, navigate to the Lambda console and choose Create Function. On the Create Function page, from the Role dropdown, choose an existing role. And from the existing role dropdown, choose the role you created. Then choose Create Function. Your Lambda function now has access to CloudWatch logs and DynamoDB. We just went through an example of using IAM roles and permission policies to give Lambda access to DynamoDB. DynamoDB provides fine-grained access control at a table, item, or attribute level. This is useful for multi-tenant environments where you have one DynamoDB table that's serving lots of users. You can also control access to individual data items and attributes. For example, you can grant permissions on a table but restrict access to specific items in that table based on primary key values. An example might be a social networking app for games, where all users' saved game data is stored in a single table, but no users can access data items that they do not own. This fine-grained access control separates data out when you have multi-tenant data living in one table to make sure that users don't see each other's data. 
DynamoDB is also integrated with Amazon CloudWatch and AWS CloudTrail to capture changes to configurations, measure metrics around DynamoDB performance, and set alarms to track specific events. You can also monitor your Lambda function and DynamoDB applications using CloudWatch, which collects and processes raw data into readable, near real-time metrics. These statistics are retained for a period of time so that you can access historical information for a better perspective on how your web application or service is performing. By default, DynamoDB and Lambda metric data is set to CloudWatch automatically. All user data stored in Amazon DynamoDB is fully encrypted at rest. DynamoDB encryption at rest provides enhanced security by encrypting all of your data at rest using encryption keys stored in AWS Key Management Service, or AWS KMS. This functionality helps reduce the operational burden and complexity involved in protecting sensitive data. With encryption at rest, you can build security-sensitive applications that meet strict encryption compliance and regulatory requirements. In this video, you learned about the Lambda permissions model. You also went through a tutorial of how to grant AWS Lambda access to Amazon DynamoDB. You learned about encryption at rest with DynamoDB, using IAM policy conditions for fine-grained access control, and AWS identity and access management in DynamoDB. To learn more about Lambda and DynamoDB, head to serverlessland.com, where you'll find more content from me and my team. I'm Talia Nasi. Thanks for tuning in.